All right, hello grade eights and welcome to lesson 12.2, theoretical and experimental probabilities. All right, found conveniently on page 404 of your textbooks. And the goal, which you will write down in your notes, is to calculate and compare theoretical and experimental probabilities, which I will go into in a little bit of detail throughout the video. So here's the question. The question is Rowan and Kaylee are designing a nutrition game for their health class. They need a way for players to select a number from 0 to 9 randomly. Rowan suggests that they use the last digit of food prices in store flyers. Kaylee and Ronan wonder if the digits in the food prices are random. So the question is, do the numbers 0 to 9 appear with equal probability in different place values in food prices? It's a little bit of a confusing question, but we will go slow. So here we go. A, suppose that the number 0 to 9 were equally likely to be the last digit of a food price. What is the theoretical probability of having each number from 0 to 9 as the last digit? Okay, last digit as in here's your price, okay, and there is the last digit, okay, last digit in your food price, okay, and here is your list of food of your food prices from I don't know, it looks like a bill or something okay so theoretically 0 to 9 okay 0 to 9 is 10 numbers so theoretically as in if they're all equal it will be 1 out of 10 each number will appear once okay and that probability rate will be a 0 0.1 or a 10% Okay, so that's what you mean. So by saying theoretically, you're saying if this all appears equally, theoretically, each number will come up one out of ten times, ten percent, zero point one as a decimal. Okay, but in reality, in reality, good friends, you record the number of frequency of each number from zero to nine as the last digit in the food price. Now you calculate the experimental probability for each number. Now as you peruse through this list right here, you see that number zero happens four times, okay? And here is four times out of 40, all right, which is 10%, 0 0.1, number one, zero, number two, zero, three, zero, four, zero. They don't show up at all, all right? Nothing, they don't show up. Five shows up six times, okay, 15%, all right? Six shows up one time, 0.25%, all right, 7 shows up 7 out of 40, 17.5%, and so on and so on and so forth. What is the largest number here that shows up the most? 9 shows up with a frequency of 20 times, and that, my friends, is 50%. So half the numbers here, all right, all have the last digit of 9. All right, so you copy this down for this question right here. Pause if you need to, all right? So what you're doing here is you're analyzing the data. You have a theory, possibility, what it could be, but in actuality, it comes out like this after you look at the data, all right? After you go through the data. All right, number five, all right. The the slide is number five. The question is, see, which numbers are were least likely to be the last digit? Which number was most likely? Well, we went through the data, all right, and it said that the least likely, as in zero, came up no times, zero times showed up, okay? Zero times was one, two, three, and four. In analyzing your data, numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 did not show up. All right, what is the greatest probability? Was number 9. Okay, as we said earlier, they came up 20 out of 40 times, okay, for a frequency of 50%. Okay, 20 out of 40 is uh, one half, so it came up half the time. Okay? Pretty simple stuff. It's all about analyzing your data, okay? So, now, now this is different from what you thought it might be. We're thinking they come up randomly, they come each time once, 
they're all going to show equal. Well, no, this is not the case here. As you can see, these numbers have not shown up at all, and 9 showed up half the time. All right, lovely, lovely. Let's continue. All right, compare the theater, theoretical probabilities you calculate in step A with the experimental probabilities you calculate in step B. Is it what you expected? Okay, as I just said earlier, all right, you thought that each, each number would come up an equal amount of times. All right, so 0 to, to 9, each one was come up one time each, so it's a frequency of 10%. Okay? Also, if you prove it, I'm looking at this here. I'm looking here. Okay, I see a lot of zeros. I see a lot of nines. Just if you prove, you know what I mean? You just go through this and say, hey, I see this very quickly. I see a lot of nines. I see a lot of zeros. Was that the case? No, that wasn't the case either. Not for zero, at least. All right, because zero, if you look at the chart, how many times did that come up? Zero came up four times. Okay, so zero was four times. Okay, 40, sorry, 40. Okay, I'll just keep it up there. Four times. Okay, and and nine came up twenty times. Okay, so I thought that I'm going to see a lot of zeros. I'm going to see a lot of nines. I was right with nine. I wasn't right with zero. Okay, that's is. Uh, let me just erase that so it doesn't get crazy. Doesn't confuse you. There you go. Four times. Okay, and nine came up twenty times. Times. Good, good, lovely. All right, now we take a look at the other, at the other uh, decimal place. Okay, so calculate the experimental experimental probabilities for the numbers zero to nine in the other two place values of the food prices. Write your answer in decimal form. All right, so zero to nine again. You're making another chart. Okay, the experimental probability. Okay, the first digit. All right, zero came up 32 and a half times. Experimental probability, the middle digit, okay. So let's just say, see the see the first entry there. There's your middle digit, okay, and there's your first digit. So middle, right there, and there's your first digit, okay. So in the first digit, the zero came up 0.325 times, okay. As a middle digit, it came up like. 0.1%, okay, 0.01% of the times, and so on and so forth, all right? Notice the difference between the frequencies that come up in the first digit and the second digit. Some of them are drastically different, okay? It's all a matter of getting in and going through the data, analyzing your data, okay? Nine, again, shows up a lot, okay? Notice that there, nine showing up a lot. Okay, so that this is the this is the data analysis right here. All right, so if we look at F, how do the post probabilities you calculate in step A compare to the probabilities you um, you calculate in step E? Experimental probabilities calculated in step E are close to the theoretical probabilities, as in they showed up more frequently. You'll notice everything everything was represented, as in the first. In our first experiment, when we analyzed the data, 1, 2, 3, and 4 didn't come up at all, and 9 came up 20 times. So big discrepancy using the last digit. If you analyze the numbers here, okay, everything seemed to be represented a little more evenly. Still different, but it was still represented more evenly. So our initial premise was saying that, ev that everything's going to come out 1 out of 10 times. Not the case with the last digit. All right? That was not the case in the last digit. All right? Definitely not the case in the last digit. Okay? However, in looking at the at the middle and the first it did happen a little more often. Okay? A little bit more often. That is the worst happy face I've ever seen. Anyway, so in looking at all the data, you're going to find things uh, that work with your theory. All right, just a matter of data analysis. All right, and finally, finally, do all the numbers in zero from zero to nine appear with equal probability in each position of the food prices? Okay, again, that is not the case. 
all right? If all the digits appear, prob uh, appear, appear the same, it's going to be 1 in 9. I mean, well, sorry, 1 in 10, 10%. And as we went through all the data, that was not the case, all right? Not the case. In both of the experiments we ran, not the case. So the question is, did the numbers come up frequently to at 10% frequency rate? No, it did not. It varied, all right? It varied between 0, okay, percent to 50%. I know it says to write in decimals, okay, but you can figure it out. All right, zero, zero, fifty percent is zero point five. All right, zero point five, zero. All right, and there you have it. Zero point five is a decimal. Okay, so where all the story is, young people, is you have to go through the data. You actually have to analyze the data. Probability is nice. It's wonderful. Okay, but it's a starting point. So what you want to do is you need to go through your data and make sure your experiments work. Make sure your theory is, is, uh, is proven by your data. Okay, good. We're all good here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for watching. Talk soon.